concerns. If I, if I don't have an answer there, I'll follow back up. Uh, I have staff on the phone to take notes for me as well. But it's my turn time to listen to you about your issues and concerns. If it's good or it's bad, don't be ashamed to tell me. Uh, the only way I can help is by knowing. Uh, one of my major concerns as we move forward uh, right now is making sure students are able to receive the support that they need to be successful. Uh, I know some colleges are doing certain things uh, regards to food and uh, for their students, but most people know that we're, we're trying to ship stuff to your homes. So we're right now, we have a partnership with Every Table uh, where students are able to order food um, and the food will be shipped to your home. Uh, we have just announced yesterday, I think you got an email on that yesterday as well, regards to Wi-Fi uh, hotspots uh, for students. We're, uh, we're purchasing that um, and also learn out the, um, the hotspot where you have up to seven months of hotspot for those individuals who do not have uh, computer internet access at home. We also have a laptop program, loan program, where students are able to uh, RSVP and get uh, receive laptops. Our goal is to move that to be able to ship those laptops to students instead of students have to come on campus. We're trying to find ways to get you the resource that you need uh, in, a, as, in a, a timely manner where you do not have to come to campus. But this is all new to us, for us. And so as we go through this, we're, there's some challenges and we're trying to figure it all out. But just know that we're trying to figure out the best needs of our students. The other thing that we're working on too that's important is we are receiving money from the CARES Act. And so last night in my report, I talked about that a little bit. So we're receiving about $2.5 million from the uh, federal government. Uh, we're, our plan is uh, of that $1.2 million have to be spent on uh, emergency grants to students. We're actually looking at spending about 1.5 million. We increased that amount. Uh, that's important to us. We know students uh, are need uh, additional financial assistance. It's only for students who are eligible for Title IV program and who have submitted a FAFSA application. Uh, that's the one of the caveats. If students who are undocumented or AB 54 students do not qualify, but we're looking at other programs for those students through our own state dollars. But I'm excited about those funds, those funds coming in to provide some cash grants to our students who are eligible for Title IV. So those are new things that are happening um, this week regards to uh, COVID-19, and we're excited about it. So, uh, Chris, I, I want to take questions, uh, and it's up to you how you want to do that, but I'm, I'm, really, I'm ready to take questions and hear what students have to say. Okay, thank you, Dr. Curry. Uh, yeah, so just just really quick before we get started, just understand too for all the students here that you know the COVID nineteen is is new for all of us. I definitely didn't go to school for something like this, so we are trying to figure this out. We understand there's there's concerns on both ends, so we are trying to adjust as quickly as we can. So, you know, don't please don't get discouraged that if we don't have every single answer for you right now because it is a part of the conversation we do know it's something we need to look at and this is completely brand new we've never gone virtual like this and the fact that we did and the fact we did so quickly um, i think just shows that we're really trying to work hard for all of you to make sure that you know your your learning and and your education is not affected um, so moving forward, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to use the chat as well, but if there's anybody who would, has a question, a burning question for Dr. Curry, um, please type in chat that you have a question or you can also raise your hand. Um, I'm also monitoring the chat as well and participants, so um, I will leave it up to any of you for any of you that has any questions. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to ask... Um, Dr. Curry, in regards of what he spoke about, about the cash grants for the students, what if you're not a um, high school graduate, but you've been in, you've been a, in attendance with school for two years full time and you want to take the GED, but right now you don't have the funding because you're in school. So how does that work? So one what, what would be helpful uh, is I, I gotta, we gotta, if you state your name or at least put your name in the chat so then if, if I want to be able to follow back up with you, I want to be able to follow up. So if you just state your name uh, and then I want to be able to follow back up with the question because I want my financial aid people to talk to you. But there's two ways to do it. One, if students who qualify for Title IV programs, they're able to receive some of the cash grants from the CARES Act. But also two, we set aside $90,000 to do with Ed Equity, which we announced in a couple of days, uh, that students would be able to receive a $500 grant. And the way we're doing that grant, it has, it has nothing to do with regards to, it's only for students who are eligible, who are enrolled at Compton College. 
in, in, in at least one unit. And you can apply for this emergency grant as well. And that's supposed to roll out on May 15th. And that does not have a requirement in regards to high school diploma. The key that I want to talk about when we, we roll out these programs is you have to check your email address. Check your email to get all the updated information because we're sending information to students by email. Okay, so um, I just have to keep checking my email and then once I get it, then fill out the application? Yeah, so for the for the one I mentioned about the Ed Equity, that's actually an app. So you'll get an email in regards to that and then you can go online to be able to apply for that. Okay, thank you, Dr. Curry. But, but also too, look at online about our, our food program with every table. You have to order on Wednesday nights before 12 o'clock. Everything is being sent to you. Just make sure you 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 stand, you get it, you you fill out the information to do that. Okay. And so one of the things our staff has been very adamant about, I want to say that um, it is um, our our Tartar support group, which Chris Perez is a part of. They they their whole thought has been about if you're enrolled in one unit, you should receive the services. Some colleges are saying you got to be enrolled in six units, you got to be enrolled in twelve units. So our policy is basically you one unit, you can be able to enroll in the services. However, the federal money for the CARES Act, they only provided, the way they set that up, you have to be a Title IV eligible student. You have to have applied for FAFSA. And that's where that comes in. But I want to make sure you know what the CARES Act stands for. It stands for the Corona, Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Securities Act. And we'll type that in the chat. It's a, it's a coronavirus aid, relief, and economic security CARES Act. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. And so most colleges come to receive 2.5 million and our goal is to put as much as possible in, in students' hands. And so what I sent out to the campus last night was I, um, I sent out the campus last night the proposed funding schedule. So it includes uh, cash grants, it includes funding for food programs, for food resources, it includes funding for housing support for our students. Uh, we know some students are having housing challenges right now. It also included funding for additional uh, laptops and also um, for the Wi Fi uh, hotspots. And so you'll get more information on that will come out, but the financial aid office will be running those reports. Uh, regards to uh, eligibility. So if, if you fill out a, a FAFSA application, if you're Title IV eligible, you, you, they will contact you in regards to the logistics of it. Okay. All right, Shamika, is that good? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do I just go through the list? Uh, yeah, so yeah, so just for everyone so that they know, we're going to go through chat. So as the responses come in, or as they say, I have a question, we're going to go um, first ones first, and then we'll go all the way down. So the next one, I believe, should be from Lorena. And Lorena, you can unmute yourself. Okay, I did already. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Curry, uh, Chris. Um, my name is Marina Gonzalez. I have a few questions. Um, first question. Um, in regards to the grant amount, the, is there an amount that's going to be given, or that's not been determined yet? So for the uh, for the CARES Act grant, we the, the amount has not been determined because we're running the reports now of how many students are eligible based off of Title IV. And then once we get that, it'll be an equally divided amount for us for the students. Uh, we're looking at doing a payment this spring, a summer payment, a fall payment, a winter payment, and also a spring of 2021 payment. So we try to stress those funds out because we know that individuals are going to be having the same type of uh, financial insecurity for the next year. So we're trying to we're trying to balance that for our students. But also the ed equity payments that we're looking at beginning in, in May that was been set at five hundred dollars. Okay. Now my question: When you say Title IV, what is Title IV? So did you fill out a federal application for federal student aid? Correct, I did. Okay. Are you receiving financial aid right now? Yes. Okay, so you're a part of the Title IV program. Okay. Now, another question in regards to graduation. Um, I was, I, I was, or I am, I don't know how that is yet. Any update in regards to graduation? I turn in my petition um, on, in January. Everything is set away. Is graduation still going um, 
through virtual, those that cannot walk stage, will they be able to walk stage next year? Okay, so uh, that's a great question. Right now, our staff and admission records, so please understand this, um, and no disrespect to anyone, with this coronavirus and staff here uh, a couple of days a week, they're behind schedule regards to the, um, the graduation petitions. It is no fault of anyone, just a lot of work, just a lot of transition. So our goal is to complete that process in, in the hopefully in the next two weeks regards to the graduation petitions. And then what's gonna happen, we're doing a virtual graduation and this is our first time doing it uh, and hopefully our last. It will be a virtual commencement ceremony on June 12th where we drop a video on June 12th. And so students will, who are graduating students receive an email asking them to submit, a, to upload a video. So each graduate will be, have the opportunity to upload a video and that video will be included in the virtual graduation. And then also we're gonna be sending out some stuff to you, a copy of the program and some other items to you prior to the June 12th ceremony. Uh, and then anyone that was eligible to graduate this year but did not walk can be able to graduate in the summer, in June of 2021. Okay, and then next question is, in order to be um, in honor roll, what is the required GPA? I don't, I, I wanna say it was a 3.5 GPA, but I can verify that for you regards to the, 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 the high honors. And so let me verify that for you and give me a couple seconds. We're, we're gonna respond to that in the chat. Okay. And I, that's it. Those are all my questions. I appreciate you answering them. Thank you. And I appreciate Oh, wait, wait, wait. One more, one more. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, when a student is tested positive, I'm aware that they have to send out an email, correct? Correct. Okay, that email is gonna, what is that email for? Is I know HIPAA regulation wouldn't expose who is positive and who's not. Um, what is the purpose of that email? So uh, according to our pandemic plan and also to the LA County, we have to notify employees and students if there's anyone else that was a positive case on our campus. We do not share the individual's name. We don't share anything. All we're doing is informing people that there's a positive case. But also too, we, we made sure that the rooms that the, that individual or places on campus were clean, cleaned up by an outside firm to make sure there's no more, there could be no more potential spread of the virus in that location. Okay. So it's a requirement for LA County that we have to, to let, inform people about that. And so we've been doing that. One of the things that we've been, we struggle with right now is that we've been closed, uh, not closed, but we've been offering everything remotely since March. And so, uh, that means there's haven't been any positive cases of individuals on our campus. And so we just try to make sure we tell, inform the campus community about what's going on and make sure those affected areas are clean. And one of these that I've been talking to the staff about is once we do open back up as an institution, and please don't ask me a question when we're coming back because I really don't know. But, <laughs> um, but when we do come back, I'm gonna have the outside firm that we use to clean the whole campus because I want people to know that we have made sure the whole campus is clean uh, thoroughly clean um, by the outside firm prior to coming back. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that's it. Um, those were all my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, Jonathan, go ahead. Sure. My name is Jonathan Ripto. I do have two questions. Uh, both of these are on behalf of students and myself. The first was about graduation, but you said that petitions would probably be getting answered around two weeks. Is that correct? They'll be completed. They've been working on it, but they've been completed about two weeks. Our okay. goal, usually we try to be done in, in April, but the problem this year was with regards to the staff not being on campus. And so they're ramping it up, trying to complete it, and they know the sense of urgency that we have right now. Right, it's understandable. I, a lot of our students are worried because it feels like their graduation is up in the air with no answer. Yeah. Uh, thank you for confirming that for me. Uh, my next so, question. John, to catch your question, do you think we should do an update to students regards to like a, a letter or email, let them know that we're still processing petitions? And so people are not concerned. Um, that would be amazing if you could send out a letter because there's uh, three, four students in my intercultural class who are worried about their graduation. I have another two in my Spanish class who don't know what's going on. And I have a couple in a poli sci class. So students are worried about graduating. Got it. Uh, my second question is in regards to classrooms on Zoom. I've been hearing that a lot of students are having uh, issues communicating with their professors, uh, almost as if the professors aren't holding uh, virtual office hours or something like that where they can't get feedback on their work and they're kind of just uh, turning in work and hoping for the best at the end of the day. 
Is there anything we can do on that end? Uh, I need the, the key is to, to, to communicate with your faculty members by email. And then also, if there's an issue with that, you can contact your dean. So one of the things we can do as well, we can send an email to students regards to if you're having trouble meeting with your, contacting your faculty member, this is the appropriate dean to contact. Right. So then we can step it up another level. Does that work? That definitely works. Having a dean directory would be very uh, helpful in the event that, that those actions do need to be taken. Okay, cool. We can do that. So we'll, so we'll send an email out, one about graduation, and then we'll send another email out about the uh, contacting your faculty members and communication. So it'll be two separate emails. So we'll probably do the one about graduation tomorrow, and then Monday we have the second email to go out to students about contacting the dean. And we got to figure out a way to do that because some people won't know the dean for which area. So we got to say what classes fall under this area, and then you know which dean to contact. But we can do that. All right. Thank you so much, and I appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, we have Noberta next. Hello. My question is, um, it's about refunds. With the COVID-19 is happening, some students, some, one second, give me a minute. Yeah, um, what is the process for students where they want to get their refunds for books and the health fees? So we have not did, we're not doing refunds with the books, that's separate, that's the bookstore. And so that's a separate contract, but we have done refunds on the parking. Um, so the health center, I've been thinking about that lately, and that's another conversation I have to have with our health center provider. But I've been thinking about that for the last uh, couple of weeks in regards to health services because they are providing services remotely, but it's not the same. So that's been on my mind. But we but we have moved forward in regards to refunding students for their for their parking fee. And if students do the EW by the May 15th date, we're providing refunds for those students as well. But we're trying to we're trying to figure out ways to make sure that students um, who have issues financially and regards to refunds because we're not on campus. We're providing those refunds. We have also been very supportive of our student workers. We kept our student workers on payroll or by their schedule. Uh, we're paying them their, their uh, previously scheduled hours through June 30th. And the reason why we're doing that because we understand what's happened during this time. So we're very, uh, been very responsive to that regards to students, but we will follow back up on the health center and see what we can do in that area. Thank you. Thank you. No, Bert, I appreciate it. All right, next we have uh, Jocelyn. Good afternoon, Dr. Curry, and thank you so much for holding this forum for us. Really appreciate it. Um, my question is, when can we anticipate the summer and fall schedules rolling out so that we can start registration? So we move back registration for the summer and fall. So the May 26th is the date for summer registration begin, and then June 9th uh, for the uh, fall. I know that they've been working on trying to get the schedule out soon. I, I don't know the exact date, but uh, Heather Parnock could put on this chat of when the, that will be available to students and also be posted online. One of the things that we'd be doing as well, we'd be sending out a copy of the class schedule to all of our residents within our district. The reason why we're behind on our class schedule was because we were thinking about COVID-19 and what potentially could happen. And we're trying to work through some issues with the schedule. But our goal was to get the schedule out as soon as possible. But we have a registration begins on the 26th of May and then also on June 9th. Great. Right. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you, Jocelyn. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Yedisman. I'm sorry if I put your name, by the way. Yes, hi. It's, um, you can call me Yeti because it's Yeti's many and it's too long. <laughs> Appreciate it, Yeti. Okay, yeah. Um, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for hosting this meeting. It was like a wonderful, like, I was like shot. I was like, oh, wow, that's great. And thank you for, um, you know, worrying about the students and having the concerns and so we could speak, you know, so thank you for the opportunity. Um, my first question is, um, okay, for the computers, um, I was just wondering, like, the computers if we could get better computers because those computers like touchscreen computers because I don't know I've been having issue with the computers but I know they cost more the touchscreen computers but in the future if you could guys could get like better computers. I'm talking about laptops? Yeah. Okay laptops. so okay 
I, I understand what you're saying, and I would tell you that we were trying to get laptops that will be here in a timely manner. And so uh, we will continue to uh, monitor that because we're going to buy more laptops as we move forward in the future. Um, but I was, we're trying to get what we can get here. And we had some laptops that we provided that were going to be provided for uh, AB705 students for English and math. They weren't designated to be outside of that. But I get it. We're going to move forward and try to get better computers as we move forward as a college. But I would tell you this, though, right? And I'm not trying to philosophize with you today. But if you look at higher education and how we provide higher education within our community, one of the things that I've learned through COVID-19 is that we have to make sure we put technology in our students' hands. And it was very clear that uh, once we went online that some students were not prepared for this type of technology. They weren't exposed to, to Canvas. And so we have to make sure as we move forward that everyone is having some technology in their hands while they're at Compton College. And that's a high priority for me and also for our administration as we move forward. But we have to make sure we're putting technology in your hands. Okay, and also for um, another question. Um, for the tutoring, um, like if you guys could send an email to the students like saying that you guys have tutoring, like math tutoring, because it was hard for me to find math tutoring and because um, the math teachers are not telling their students that tutoring is available for students from Compton College. So. I mean, if you guys could tell the math teachers that you guys do have tutoring, because um, it was hard for me to get tutoring for math. And this, the, I mean, my teacher, my math teacher, he's not doing his job. So, I mean, if you guys could send an email to all the students saying that there's tutoring available so the students can know. We can do that. And also um, for the, so Wait, for the- I said, I want to make sure you know, that that's a follow by them. We're gonna do an email to students about the graduation petitions, and we do an email to students about the fact about the courses and the dean of who they should contact. And we also do an email to students about the tutoring services that are available. Yeah. So and also, so the teachers are gonna give us the feedback how we're doing, right? Because I mean, right now I don't even know for my math class. I don't even know how I'm doing in math because he's not even following up with the students. So is he gonna let us know? Um, so one of the things that we're doing is we did an early alert uh, for uh, with our faculty, and we're try we try to encourage more faculty to participate. Just put your name in the uh, the chat, and then my staff can follow back up with you, our student service advisor, for the, based off your major, to follow back up with you regards to where you're at, and to make that contact with your faculty member. Okay, thank you. Those are all my questions. Thank you. But please put it in the chat for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question, Yeti. Uh, we have Kevin. Uh, Chris, just, just, yeah. just, just as a, as a side note, if people put in the chat like their confident their name, phone number, just make sure they put it privately to you, and then you can forward it to uh, the appropriate person so we can be able to start following up. Okay, sounds good. All right, we have uh, Kevin. Kevin next. Dr. Curry, good afternoon. Good afternoon. First of all, just let me say thank you. Um, for the work, just from my personal experience from having been on campus and, and going through this online experience, um, between you and the staff and the educators, I've had nothing but a great experience uh, from the educators figuring out how to go from being in class to online and doing it immediately to, uh, to the food and the groceries and even the, the computer loan program. You have no idea how much of a blessing that was because my internet at, at the building where I live went out. And then the, the very next week, the, the uh, computer loan program happened. So I just want to tell you, thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, my question is about the CARE Act. Uh, I received an email uh, from, I guess, the people that are responsible for the, Air Act, the CARE Act being uh, initiated, saying that I was qualified. And then maybe a couple days later, I received an email saying that that first email was a mistake. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, why I received that second email about, about possibly not being qualified, but I know I'm on my last payment for, for the default. I was originally in default on some prior college loans. And so tomorrow is my last payment to get off of default. I just want to see if that is possibly the reason why I got that letter saying I was no longer uh, eligible for the CARE Act funds. So let me, let me ask, first of all, some people got a message from Bank Mobile 
uh, regards to care act funds and they made a mistake. So uh, that, that's our third party vendor who provides that service on behalf of our district and they made a mistake. So okay. I wanna apologize to you for their mistake. The second piece is put your name and information in chat and then we can have our financial aid director follow back up with you regards to your eligibility for CARES Act fund after you have made your payment, this, that, and the other. They can provide you with the details as it relates to that. But also be on the lookout for our ed equity and our um, the ed equity payments that we provided emergency grants that's gonna start in a couple weeks, May 15th, if we're trying to roll that out. To sign up for that, which would be a $500 grant. And so we're, we're gonna be rolling, we're rolling out a lot of different initiatives right now. And the key is for you to check the email, but, uh, and the ed equity is separate from what the, it, it, we still have to notify the financial aid office about you receiving it. However, it's separate from the CARES Act. This is money that we're using from the uh, Student Equity Achievement to support our students. Okay, Dr. So I, for that. Okay, I thank you for all of it. Again, uh, the work that you all have been doing in spite of everything that's been happening, to me, it's top notch. You guys have really been doing the best job you can. Thank you. You, you don't understand, that, that makes me feel, I saw someone raise a sign, saying yes, thank you. Uh, I will tell you, I, I, I eat and breathe the work that I do, and my staff hears me all the time, but I'm always trying to figure out different ways to provide services to our students. And my major issue has been having students on campus with regards to COVID. I wanna make sure before anyone comes to our campus is safe, and we wanna be able to roll out programs to get you item things that you need directly to your door. I'm really excited about this new partnership we we're working on with Grubhub. Um, and I know some, who, who used Grubhub? Can you do like a, a sign or hand raise? Who you, who you likes Grubhub? Grubhub? Nobody likes Grubhub? Nobody? Well, I don't use them. <laughs> All right, so one of these we're looking at with the partnership with Grubhub is that if you're ordering food through Grubhub, we're working on a partnership where you can be able to put money into account and the students are able to utilize Grubhub to order food to go directly to your home. And so we're, we're trying to roll that out within the next couple of weeks. I think we've got the contract solidified today based off some final negotiations. They want us to have, they want to require students to provide their credit cards. We said, no, give us dummy cards, no, give students dummy numbers to use, but we don't want our students to use credit cards at all to be participating in this program. So we, we negotiated hard on that. And so they came up with a solution, but we're trying to figure out ways to get you services where you don't have to leave your house. Yeah. Right? And so some of the staff, I know EOPS is working on some ideas with the cafeteria to send uh, some different fruit baskets and just that stuff like that out. So yeah, I just out. received, I just received my every table, and I also got an email from the EOPS. So it to me, you all are absolutely moving at a at a record pace. So one thing I would tell you about every table, and this is for I don't know, I, there's one student who always talks about our cafeteria. But uh, we, we went out to bid for our cafeteria service. So beginning in fall, every table will be running our cafeteria. Wow. And so okay. the, the, I saw that. So yeah. the good part about that is we're the, the, the only issue we got with, with every table just solidifying was a coffee thing and working that out. But they don't be providing breakfast in the morning, lunch, all that will be set up for students. And the good part about it is affordable. We're buying meals now for you for $5. And we're also going to be having our every table vending machines on campus. So when the cafeteria is closed, students can be able to get food from the vending machines. And so the staff walked that a couple of weeks ago. And so we want to make sure that that's live uh, before students come back on campus. But I'm excited about the partnership with every table. Not only have the cafeteria, but if you're on campus on a weekend or in the evening, you want some healthy food, you can go right to the vending machine and order and then drop your meal down for $5 and just put it in the microwave. Wow. Okay. Thank so we're excited you. about that. Next question. All right. Was that the last question, Kevin? I'm sorry. Yes, that's all. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. All right. The next person we have, it's just the, the name was from iPhone. So iPhone, if you want to go ahead, uh, it's your turn to speak. And if you could let us know your name so I can rename you so we know who we're talking to. iPhone, go ahead.
I just right. sent them. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask more so about like how the classes are starting in the fall. Um, I mean, my class is prolonged to the fall. And I kind of wanted to know, like, how does that work with the new classes coming in with um, with the cosmetology? Because I'm taking, so we're supposed to get, be getting an incomplete and then finishing it in the fall. And I'm just kind of confused with how that works. What, what it means is that you can, you'll have the opportunity to finish the class in the fall semester. You'll be behind a little bit due to timing because the number of hours need to be completed but you'll be able to finish it in the fall semester. One of the things we're looking at too, if we're able to get back in campus in the summer, the students can be able to do some hours in the summer. But the problem that we have right now is we just don't know with the, what's gonna happen with the coronavirus. Uh, I was quoted today in the um, Ed Source, and my fear is that if you look at some of the research about the coronavirus, is that there's a potential peak again during the flu season. And so then what does that look like at our campus? And so we're trying to figure this whole thing out but mm -hmm. the biggest issue we have is the laboratory classes and the activity courses. Uh, Cause some classes will not be able to finish this spring because you need to do some of the uh, hours. And what does it look like to be able to finish some of those hours in the summer and also in the fall. But just know this is that we're trying to figure it out and we're gonna be working with our students and our faculty. And you don't have individual plans to try to get through, but we're trying to figure out ways to help support our students through this process. Okay, I also received an email from financial aid saying that they need my GPA for this semester for next semester. And with that happening, I don't really know how that's going to work out. Is that something that I should talk to financial aid about? Yeah, I, I recommend you put your information in the chat and we'll have someone follow back up with you from financial aid. Uh, and I don't know what the GPA is, is asked for because I have thoughts about it. But I don't want to say what it is, because then if I'm wrong, then you say, Dr. Curry said it was this. I don't know. But put your information in chat, and we can follow up. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your question. All right. Uh, the next person we have is Blanca. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, well, my question or my concern is um, regarding the CARE Direct um, grant. Because um, yesterday we received an email saying that we were not going to receive a, a care direct grant this semester. So what happens, um, you know, because I depend on my disbursements and these grants. I don't work and I'm a mother of three. So I really depend on this money. And um, with that being said, like, what happens with the funds if we don't receive anything? So this is the first time that I'm hearing about the CARE grants um, and not being provided for students. So I don't want to say, I, I don't know what's going on there, but we will follow back up. But I will say this I, from a policy perspective, and I hope all the students hear this. My goal is to put money in students' hands during this time. And so I don't know what's going on with the CARE grants, but we will follow back up. But there's other funding opportunities as well. Like I mentioned earlier about the Ed Equity and we're giving out money, emergency grants in May. And then also the CARES Act dollars uh, with the federal government. But we will follow back up regards to your question, the EOPS and CARE grants. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. And please put your, put your information in the chat with your name, your telephone number, so then we can follow back up. And Chris is putting together a list. And so that's how we're going to be able to follow back up. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Blanca. Appreciate it. All right. Next, we have uh, Tracy. Do we have Tracy coming up? I'm looking, I don't see a Tracy. All right, Tracy, we'll save your spot just in case. Uh, so we'll keep moving just so we keep things flowing. Uh, the next one we have is Maisha. Hi, everybody. Um, my question is, um, how will the students be able, will the students be able to still use the laptops during the summer? Will there be a new, um, paper or form that we will have to sign, um, how would that work out? 
I don't know, but I would tell you this is that uh, basically you have the computer, you're loaned the computer and the, the policy, my staff need to work it out. But from my perspective, if you're still enrolled in courses for a summer, then you, you return it once you're not enrolled. And so the staff has to write up the policy that relates to that, but that's my philosophy on that. You should not have to return it tomorrow because the semester's over. You return it once you're done here as a student. Okay, thank you so much. And another question, how are you and your family coping with the COVID-19? It's insane. I have a, I have a, uh, a 10 year old. And so my wife and I rotate who's at home with him. Um, it's, 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 but it's scary. Uh, it's, he, he was more so, um, so I travel a lot for work and he, so in, early, in February, he was telling me like, no, Dr. K Betty, wash your hands, uh, be careful, coronavirus. And I was, and, you know, he talking about when you travel, wear a mask. And I was like, leave me alone, right? <laughs> right. He was right. <laughs> right. So uh, he, he, he's more so nervous about me traveling to work, uh, like I'm at work today. But he's more so concerned about that. But it's, it's understandable. But it's, it's, it's a challenge because he wants his daddy to be at home. He's at home. He's trying to use Zoom as a 10-year-old. And for anyone that has kids that's on his line and seeing your, your child have to go to school, having you like Zoom, uh, having meetings with their teachers, the same stuff that you're going through, they're going through, and they're not, and some of those schools don't have technology, right? So this has been an adjustment for us all, but it's 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 hard. And so we're, we're gonna make it though. We're gonna make it, yes. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Curry, and take care. Thank you. Thank you, Maisha. Um, I believe, Jonathan, I think you had a follow-up question that you wanted to ask. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I forgot it when I was asking my question, but my uh, last question is pertaining towards the scholarships. I did apply to, to a scholarship for this semester. Uh, when will we be getting news about the scholarships? I don't know. I have to get back to you. I know that they were doing the paperwork a couple weeks ago, and I don't know what's holding up the process. So uh, we, we have your name. We can be able to follow back up with you. But I know they're processing scholarship, but I just don't know where they're at in it. Okay. Well, if you could just keep me updated, that would be great. Yeah. We, we will do, uh, just make sure you put your name in the drop and then uh, we can follow back up with the financial aid department. Cause I, I saw an email that they were processing scholarships and I don't know what, where they're at in the final piece of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is that it? Uh, we do have one more. Uh, they're having some tech issues, so we're figuring that out. Uh, so yes, so thank you everybody. I am getting your private messages as far as follow-ups. Uh, when you do that, just make sure you try to include as much information as you can. That way when we do follow up with you, um, if it comes from Dr. Curry or he's, whoever he's gonna send it out to, they know exactly what the conversation was and how they can uh, follow up with you. Uh, the next person is uh, Felicia. Hi, Dr. Curry. My question is, has there been any discussion with administrator or board or treasurer about how campus is going to reopen? Yeah, we're starting those conversations right now. Uh, we're not there yet to uh, make the final decision about when the campus is going to be open. As I was quoted in the newspaper today, I'm not in a rush to make that decision. I think mm -hmm. we need to be very methodical and have some conversations about what it looks like and also take into account social distancing. Uh, my biggest concern is that if you have 30 students in an English class, what does that look like when you go down to 15? Uh, how, do, how, do, how, do you, how do you afford to be able to offer it that way? But then also, mm -hmm. how do you make sure that there's social distancing when people are walking through the hallways? And so I'm very concerned about that as we move forward. And so I want to make sure that we do it the right way. And mm -hmm. we're not in a rush to do this, right? Mm -hmm. We know mm -hmm. what we're doing for summer. That's already set. And so I want to be spend the next couple of weeks just really thinking about this and having some conversations, talking it through, and making sure we make the right decision. Because what I've seen a lot, especially with coronavirus, I see people making a lot of decisions, and they're going back over the decisions because they're rushing to do it based off of just how they feel at the moment. I think we need to be very careful about when they come back. And we're not in a rush, right? We, okay. I think we gotta make sure we do what's right for our students and also for our employees. And also I have another question. Would you, uh, will students and staff be required to wear masks in order to be on campus? Right now that's a requirement. You see, I'm in my office by myself. I have no mask on. Mm -hmm. But right now for people to be on campus, you have to have a mask and also gloves on while okay. you're on campus. And that's the requirement. When we move forward, uh, once people come back on campus, there will be some policies in place mm -hmm. regards to that. But I don't know what that's going to look like. And I don't want to say this is what's going to happen.
but I will tell you, we will be following the guidance from LA County uh, Public oh, Health. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. You. Curry. No problem. Thank you, Felicia, appreciate it. Uh, next, I have- No, oh, Chris. I have a uh, Yazik. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, I, I definitely wanted to be one of the people to commend you on the job that you're doing as well. I think it's excellent. And um, I get a sense from you that you actually care about the future of Compton College and doing the best you can. And I know it's a lot of, you know, these are unforeseen circumstances in the situation. So I just definitely want to, you know, send you a virtual high five on that and a virtual handshake and a pound. <laughs> Indeed. And then, um, so also my a kind of question, because I know you already covered the graduation situation. Um, I know myself, the way I was looking at the graduation was like, this was going to be the first graduation since um, Compton got its autonomy back. And if that was going to be like a special thing or something, or if that's going to be kind of reflected in the virtual graduation, I know you said some of us may be able to come back and walk, you know, in, in the next year or something like that. I was just wondering if that was kind of being factored in some kind of way in the situation. Uh, it will be factored in. And I, I had some surprises, some surprises, some surprises mm. for, for graduation. And so we're going to try to make some of those surprises still happen. But I had some surprises, surprises, surprises. I've been thinking about that graduation since 2005. And mm. so, um, yeah, it's disappointing, right? right. But I, we want to make sure it's the right experience for you either way. But you still can participate in next year's graduation. But I was thinking, I've been thinking about this for a long time, about the first Compton College graduation under Compton Community College District. And the reason why I say 2005, actually 2006, that was my first graduation that I participated in under Compton College when we were uh, under the Compton Community College District. So I've been waiting for a long time to see the Compton College Board of Trustees hand out diplomas to our students. And so it's, that's why this is, that, that everything with the coronavirus, the most disappointing for me is the commencement ceremony. Because that to me, seeing students' faces and then also have an opportunity to, um, to award degrees, uh, that to me is the biggest honor that a college president can have. And I was so looking forward to that on June 12th. And we're still gonna do it, right? But I was looking forward to seeing everyone and all their families and just having the biggest party ever and celebrate the students for their accomplishments. And I already bought my Chuck Taylors. I had a brand new Chuck Taylors I already bought. Yeah. New color. I got it all ready to go. Right. I got it all set. Right. Indeed. Indeed, they're like ready to go. So most people know I wear Chuck Taylors for graduation. And I had a new one with some with a twist. I'm gonna wear them when I do the video, but it's not the same. Oh, okay, right, right. I get it. So I'm glad to know you kind of felt the same way because I was kind of thinking of that from that perspective as well. And it's an honor to be a part of that first autonomous, you know, since Compton got its autonomy back in independence, that you know, to be a part of that class, even if we're doing it virtual, we still know within our hearts and minds, you know, the reality of the situation. But maybe we could just kind of discuss it more like later in the future or something like that. No, we're gonna we're 2021 is gonna be incredible where we're gonna have the graduates of 2020 and 2021 participate. We're gonna we're gonna do it big. Cool, so, that'll work. So I'm definitely... it, it's it's gonna be big and the surprises will be even bigger. But we're gonna do it big because the students you deserve it. So for some of you, and I and I got an email from some, some, a student, I can't remember who it was. And for some people, this is their first graduation. Like I yeah, get it. I'm one of those people. It's the first one. <laughs> yeah, well, from except for high school and the other stuff, but, but yeah. It's a big deal, right? Right, right, right. And so we want to make sure that you know that we know it's a big deal. And we're not taking it for granted that we had to we had to do what we're doing with the virtual. That's why we're saying you can come back next year. But we're gonna our goal is to send you, I'm gonna tell you now, we're gonna send you your diploma cover before graduation. We wanna send you a tassel before graduation. We wanna see your copy of the program before graduation. We want to make you feel like you're a part of it. And so that's why we're pushing right now to get all the stuff together, to get it out, because we want to see your package before graduation. So when you watch the live virtual, you're going to be sitting there with your tassel, your cover, see yourself in a video, you can feel excited about it. It's that's not the same, but at least you're going to know, like, you know what? They had the audacity to send me a copy of the program. They gave me my diploma cover, and they gave me my tassel. So we're right. really trying to make it work. 
Okay, one more quick thing. Um, because I've gotten other emails from you personally that was dealing with like the campus business and the updates and the COVID and everything like that. But for for whatever reason, I didn't get a, a email about this particular meeting. I found out through the EOPS people who did a great job at putting getting the word out. So that's how I was able to come in here. So um, I noticed you were on top of the other communications and things that you were going to do in the future. So I just want to know, you know, make sure I don't miss anything else like no, this. No, I, I would make sure the next time we do this, I will send a personal email to the students say, come hang out. Okay, cool. That'll work. Well, I, I appreciate it. I'm not going to take up everybody else's time. I just want to send you a shout out and the other students. Glad to see other people participating. I appreciate that you have in this event too. I think this is pretty awesome as well that you're making yourself available to be uh, communicated with and we have this platform. I think that's, that was a good idea. I was happy to see it. That's why I wanted to make sure that I came just to, you know, show up and participate. What, what is your major? Uh, right now, two, well, I'm graduating in psychology, but I'm graduating with two, two degrees, one in welding and one in psychology. So I've, I've got two degrees within this time that I'm here. I've been, you know, cram, cramming it in. That's good. And then so when I transfer, I'm transferring with the psychology, but then I'll also be leaving with a welding degree. Where, where are you transferring to? Uh, you said where am I transferring to? Yeah. Uh, Dominguez. Congratulations. That's where I want to go. I had other, you know, same reason why I want to go, go to come to Compton, the same reason why I want to go to Dominguez to keep keep the ball rolling. I was raised in this community, and it hit me like a ton of bricks a couple years ago, like, man, you, you need to go to Compton College, you know, so – it's more to the story, but that's one of the things like I wanted to come here. And then that's that's why I'm here. So I came here on purpose. You know, and for that. And you are a success story. Uh, thank you. I think you are too. I, I I like to, you know, congratulations on the position you've gotten yourself to. You know, that's major. And so even after graduation, I'm my goal is not to just leave and be like, hey, where what? It's like no, I would like to be a part of the active alumni and help and continue to make things develop and cultivate because I think Compton College is a valuable asset to the community, but I would like to see it even be more recognized participation and whatever we can do to maintain the excellence. I would like to do what I can to see to it that that's facilitated. So, so, so one thing I want to say when you talk about the future for those alumni, uh, I, I want to say thank you for being here during these times, especially when we have a partnership with El Camino over right now. Mm -hmm. But our future is so bright. And uh, one of the things for me being on campus uh, the last month, I walked uh, right in front of Student Lounge. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows, in front of Student Lounge, it was the, the concrete was uneven. Um, and so we replaced the concrete uh, a couple weeks a couple weeks ago, and they put a nice little C on the ground. Mm -hmm. But I also looked at the two buildings that are being constructed in the back of campus. And then also the old library was demolished and they're making way for new student services building. And so in 2021, 2021, three buildings on this campus. So for those alumni, please make sure you come back and stay engaged and come see what your college is gonna look like, even though it wasn't here when you were here, but you can be able to tell students that, hey, I was a part of the first graduating class of the new Compton College in 2020. And so Absolutely. please come back. Oh yeah, definitely, you got my word on that. I'm with Thank you. Thank you. All right, Zeke, thank you for your question. Okay, next we have uh, Crystal. Okay, hello everyone. And I wanna say thank you to, um, to you also for everything that the campus have done and everyone that worked there, everyone that I've came in contact with have been top notch. And all my professors, even being online have been really, really good and patient. Um, most of my questions have been answered. Um, the only thing that I have um, for um, every table, I had applied, but I haven't had any emails back from them. And also when I applied for the laptop, I hadn't got an email back either. So I had to make other arrangements as far as getting a laptop. So, um, and also from EOPS, I received the email for this um, conference. So is there any way that you can um, find out any information? Yeah, so if you do me a favor, yeah. what we're doing, you put your information in the chat uh, regards to your name and your student ID number will help us, especially about the laptop program. 
and about the every table. Every table, the first week we did 150. Now we're doing 50 per week. And I do want to increase it, but we, I, I, haven't, I don't know where the staff is at in regards to that. But we could let, let us follow up back based off of that. And the reason why we're doing 50 because we, we're doing a Grubhub partnership. So we're trying to have multiple options for students. And that's why we limited it at 50. But the first week, we had 150 people sign up. We did, we, everybody that was on the list got it. We did 150. And so we know the needs for students in regards to food. And we're trying to make sure we get as many students uh, fed as possible. But let, let us follow back up. Just put your information in the chat. And Chris will take it. And then we'll make sure we follow up on it. OK, well, the, the laptop I'm, I'm fine with. You know, no, I'm but I still want to know where you at. You said you submitted. I want to know why you were not contacted. Regardless, okay. even though you got something, it's a procedure, it's a process issue. The next person who is having the issue, if it's something that happened to you that was technical and it can happen to somebody else, they'll be in the same position and they might not have a solution. We right. have to make sure, right now we have several hundred laptops still available. So we need to make sure we get laptops out to our students. So it's not really about you in this case on that. It's about making sure our processes are, are solid so nobody else falls through the cracks. Okay. Oh, anyway. Okay, thank you. All right, Crystal, thank you for your question. Uh, we are gonna go now to Laura. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Dr. Curry, because um, just like Kevin said, everything, everything that's, that's, that the school has rolled out up to now has been good. It's been, if everybody's taken advantage of it, a lot of people um, really appreciate or have um, really, really appreciated every program so far that has, that the school has and, and that, has school, that the school has rolled out. I just want to say thank you and your staff to make sure that they get the thanks to because we couldn't have had all this we've had so far without everybody doing their um, hard work. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Laura. If we can actually go to the other Laura, she has a question as well. Hello, my name is Laura Reyes. How are you? All right. Um, well, I have several questions. My first question is what can a dean do to help students dealing with COVID-19? And my other question is how also a dean can help students that that are that can't that didn't sign up for online classes that are struggling and mentally and like like mentally like struggling and also was physically struggling with dealing with online classes and dealing with other stuff besides um, classes and also how um this is a comment um the lady from Erin table is telling me that not a lot of students are are going to get get a meal and i've been going trying to promote it to students that attend compton college so my concern is that that um well well you keep letting students students know if they're getting if they for every table because i've been promoting it myself through my social media through friends I tell them to promote it as well. So, that's so, so to the first question, uh, regards to what ASB can do for students as they to COVID-19, I think it's important that you, the communication and making sure students know about the resources that we're providing. I think a lot of students right now are, um, some students are not connected because they're not on campus. 
And so we got to make sure we keep students connected and let them know where the different information is available on the website and how they can contact their instructors. Uh, one of these that I think would be helpful for ASB, and I'm doing an email out uh, tomorrow to the students about if you have an issue with kid being in contact with your instructor, please contact your dean. Tell them people that as well. If your instructor's not follow up, contact the dean. Contact the dean. Contact the dean. We have to make sure that we're the instructor faculty are following back up with their students. And if you're not getting an answer from your faculty member, contact the dean. And you're not telling them somebody. You're basically just trying to help to make sure our students are successful. Um, the third thing regards to uh, promotion of every table, and your question is more so about the in-store. We're kind of going to slow down the in-store pickup because I know people are concerned about going outside. And so the goal is to continue to get every table to deliver meals to students' homes, and then also the Grubhub partnership to have more food delivered to students' homes as well. People are afraid to go outside right now. And so I recognize that, and the staff recognize it, but we're trying to find new creative ways to get food to students. If you have other ideas and suggestions about what we can do, please let me know. Last night I was looking um, at another school and look at the LA County uh, food bank and how they're packaging up food for students. And so one of my things I want to follow up with is trying to create a partnership with the with the food bank and figuring out how can I get the carrier service to deliver students food from the food bank to their doors. I don't want students to come on campus right now. I want to put something on your door where all you got to do is hear a doorbell ring and say that's Compton College. Right? And, I, th and that to me is important. But I'm just trying to figure out how can I get more resources to your doorbell? But on our website, we have information, and I know Heather posted about the health, food, and housing uh, resources. It's all posted on our website. Okay, also my other question is, um, how could, um, is Sam Jones doing anything to help students with their mental health? Since mental health right now is a big deal, since the pandemic started in, probably like in March. Is San John doing anything for us yeah, they, yeah, they are, and we provided some information about that. We could do another, we could do an email to students about that, which is on our website. But I would, I would tell you, even and, and don't take this the wrong way from anyone, is that um, our students, have, we have several students who have mental health issues prior to COVID-19. And St. John's has been full trying to meet those needs. Now with COVID-19 has made it even more of an issue because of what we're all dealing with during this time. And so they're providing services remotely by phone for students and we can promote that to you as well. But the issue is gonna be, it's gonna be even worse post COVID and we're back on campus. So we have to always keep the mental health issues, or not issues, but mental health situations our students are dealing with at the forefront as a college as we move forward, not only remotely, but also face-to-face. -face. But we will send something out regards to uh, St. John's and the uh, mental health services to students. Can ASB also help St. John's with, with the, um, what a students mean? ASB can help us, help us all regards to promoting our stuff. Okay. If you know a student, you tell them about all the resources, you tell them about every table, you tell them about laptops, you tell them about everything we're doing, that will help. The more people that are telling our story, the more help our students will receive. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Laura. Uh, just to be conscious of time, we are at a little bit past two o'clock. Uh, so I did want to date, thank Dr. Curry uh, for answering every question that we had. Um, I do know that in chats, uh, there were people who did want to ask follow-up questions. Uh, I just, we just wanted to make sure that everyone got a chance to ask their first question and then we would go back to the second. So unfortunately, I know we didn't get to all of you. Um, so I, I didn't get to ask my question. So for, so uh, what I was going to say is if you can send me an email, and I'll say this out loud and also say it in chat as well, to cperez at compton.edu. So I'm putting it in chat as well. Uh, so send me an email, cperez at compton.edu with your follow-up question. And then from there, I'll pass it along to the right person. We'll make sure we follow up with you. Well, I'm on my phone. Can't, I can't do anything but talk. I would take your question as my last question. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay, great. I appreciate it. Okay, first of all, um, my name is Tracy Taylor. This is my, uh, nice to meet you, Dr. Curry. This is my first time at actual Compton College. 
and um, I never took online classes before, but I am taking them now, and I'm really trying to hang in there because I've been getting very flustered and frustrated that I haven't been able to um, stay on task, but I wanted to um, tell you that you guys are doing a pretty good, a really good job for, you know, what, based on our situation right now, I am in front of every table right now. I actually am going to try their food and see if it's really good. So um, is. I, I'm sitting in the parking lot. Try, try, oh, try that jerk chicken. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. So, yeah. So um, what I wanted to say, I've been trying to, with your online tutoring, from what I'm understanding, because I used to go to the writing center, and that was a way for me to actually be able to write my papers, because I'm in Georgia Moton's class, our English 101 class on Monday and Wednesday night. So we do virtual Zoom meetings now. And um, I used to be able to go to the writing center, and I was wondering, with this online tutoring that you have provided, is that going to be like a Zoom class as well, to where I could show them my work and they could work with me or something like that, or no? They, they, they have a process in place, so put your information in chat, but we can make sure that the staff follow up. But they're doing online tutoring where they're reviewing papers, they're reviewing assignments, they're using Zoom. They're being very creative in our tutoring center. Very creative. I'm very oh, impressed oh, with what they're doing. Oh, great. Oh, okay. So, yes, my teacher sent an email yesterday. I just was wondering what the tutoring was going to consist of because I know I've been trying to get in touch with the librarian to use the Compton data uh, database, and I haven't been able to get anybody on the phone. Are staff still there to answer the phone and stuff like that or not? They're, they're utilizing their the online system uh, for the area. So, you, you don't have a chat. So, um do me a favor. Here's my here's my office number. I'm in my office. Uh, just call the college in extension 2000, and then I will get your information, okay. and I will get you the right people. Oh, okay, great. Okay, and another question. I have, um, if I wanted to, just say if I wanted to, um, I know you said May 26th is summer classes. Does that mean we're going to be doing them virtually as well? Yes, for summer, we will be online remotely for summer session one, the six week and also the eight week. The second six week in July, we set it up that it's supposed to be on campus, but we don't know what's going to happen. But classes for summer begin on June 22nd. Okay, so we can register on May 26th, though, for the summer classes, right? Correct. And then June 9th for the fall. Correct. Okay, so now and are so you with sending... Oh, go ahead. Cool. No, no, you go, you go. No, go ahead. No, 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 no go no, ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm going to send you, once you call me, I'll give you information about the tutoring, and they're using Cranium Cafe to be in touch with students. Same thing with the librarians. So all of our support oh, services okay. are utilizing Cranium Cafe. I don't know if you look online and you see these uh, pictures where you can like their cards. Uh, that is kind of crazy. It's cool. So you're able to connect with the individuals through Cranium Cafe. But we will make sure we connect you to the appropriate people. But just call my office so I can get your email address and I can start getting you connected. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I notice a lot of stuff goes through my Outlook. It doesn't go to the Cranium, I mean, to, to the Canvas emails. Are you guys sending stuff through Outlook emails or Canvas emails? We're, we're sending it through your Compton.edu email address. Compton.edu. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, Thank you so much. Um, I'm you. glad to be here at your college. I think you're doing an excellent job because um, I've never ever been to, um, I've, this is my first year living in Compton and I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed. So <laughs> I'll say this is, I'm now starting. So I'm getting, I, at first I was getting flushed and I wanted to drop, but then my teachers were like, no, 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 Tracy, don't drop, don't drop. Just hang in there. I got, I got you, I got you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, and and and, they, and, they, and we do got you, and I think that's something I hope everyone knows. We're not perfect, but no institution is perfect. But I, m the one thing that I really appreciate about our campus is the focus on basic needs. And wh when I'm having a conversation about housing, food insecurity, mental health, transportation, and now technology on our campus, it's not like I'm having a conversation and speaking to the, I'm speaking to like people who, who understand that. And that to me is important uh, for me to work. Right. I, I believe those those are barriers that hinders our student success. And so, yeah, if you're, if, you, if you're not equipped with those tools to be successful in the classroom, then we we failed you. And I, I say this in speeches all over the country. 
if you're asking a student to pass a transfer level uh, math course, but they have not eaten the night before, forget about it. It's not going to happen, right? Or if their child does not have food, if they don't have child care, it, that, we mm -hmm. have to make sure we create, we've created a college that are supporting our students' basic needs. And then if, if we're able to do that, then when you become successful, you're going to be thinking about people's basic needs as well to make sure that there should never be someone that's in a society who's hungry or who's homeless. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. If you look at the Amen. numbers, it's, it's people of color. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we are. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you so much. God bless you. And everyone stay safe and healthy. And I'm going to try the jerk chicken here at every table now. And they will be running our, they'll be running our cafeteria beginning fall of 2020. I know I heard that. So, um, so when they're going to be there, so I, now is this all just health food though? It's all health food for vegans and stuff like that? Or they, got, they have all the vegan eat? stuff, but it's, it's healthy food. Our goal is that we want to provide healthy food to our students. And so, as you know, oh. especially in our communities, the, the fast food restaurant food is not healthy food for individuals. Very true. And, and, Very and true. It causes stuff, right? So we're trying to provide healthy food. And it's gotcha. $5. dollars Oh, okay. Yeah, I have my, so I just show my Compton ID, right? That's all you need. If you don't have the Compton ID, show oh. your class skills on your Compton ID card. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, right, Tracy. Okay. Appreciate it. it? Uh, yeah, so I did have one question for you uh, that one of the students asked. Is there going to be anything like this in the future? Uh, you schedule it, I'll show up. Okay, there's your answer. And the students would like to have another one in May. Uh, Chris, you schedule it and I will show up and we'll do an email out to all students. If we try to do a Thursday at two o'clock sometime in May, I do not have a problem. Actually, let's, let's look at schedule now. Let's, let me give you a date now. So, uh, so I'm available, actually, Chris, we got it. So we go February, um, May 28th at two o'clock, at one o'clock, sorry. May 28th at one o'clock. All right, May 28th at 1 p.m. I'm gonna put that in chat. So it's proof that that what was, oh, I'm saying it to the same person, I'm so sorry. Uh, so May 28th at 1 p.m. is gonna be the next one. So I, I understand again that I know people have questions. I got a lot of private messages. Unfortunately, we can't answer all of them. So I'll stress it again. Uh, please email me and I'll put it again in chat. Uh, please email me with any questions. Uh, either you had previously asked a question or you had a question. Um, I'll collect all of those questions and I'll make sure they get uh, passed around to the right people so they make sure that regardless of what you talked about, we'll follow up with you and we will do this again. So I wanna thank you all again for coming. I really appreciate you uh, supporting this new format. Uh, Laura, I do see your message, thank you. I really appreciate seeing it on the side of my eye. Uh, but yeah, we're here for all of you. We're doing the best that we can. Uh, we know we're not perfect as Dr. Curry said, but we are doing our best to make sure that as we go through all of this, we're going this, through this together and in the end, we're all gonna be successful and, and moving on to our next goals. So thank you again, I appreciate it. And we will see you May 28th at 1 p.m. Have a good day. All right, thank you.